Welcome to Josh's Green Garage. In this video, I finally have a uh, viewer request video. If I don't get too many of those, uh, I really like it when I do. I wish I would get some more. This video in particular is going to be going all over all of the controls on the X700 series, in particular my X758. So let's get into it. Before we get started, I just want to give a quick reminder that I now have a Facebook page for the channel. So if you like this channel, uh, please go ahead and check out the Facebook page. Uh, maybe like that. Uh, I'll be posting sneak peeks of whatever I do on there. Uh, just any random things that I get into. I also have links on there to my eBay page. So please feel free to check that out. Now I'm going to go over these controls essentially as if this was for somebody buying a new machine, not really being into anything like this, or stepping up from say a 100 series or a 300 series maybe, going up to an X700 series for the capability and you're unsure how some of these controls work, or if you have a question on how some controls work, specifically the hydraulic levers. They can get confusing, uh, kind of, when you're uh, going to use different attachments other than just the mower deck or the rear three point. This video is also gonna have information on some attachment controls or extra accessories, I should say, as far as the three point, the PTO, and if you have a front quick hitch. I'll be going over all the controls uh, for each of those as well. I'm gonna start here with the operator station though. I'm gonna go through this side, I'll go through the other side and then show you the display real quick and then we'll go out through there. So first thing you have, this is gonna be on the right hand side controls. You have your ignition of course, so off, you have your you know, on and then the start position uh, next to it. And if you have a diesel, it won't be on the gas, but if you have the diesel on the on position, it'll run the glow plugs to warm up the cylinders uh, first. So <clears throat> you gotta leave that on and then you'll wait till the little squiggly line indicator goes off on the dash before you start if it's cold weather. Next to that here is the PTO button, or lever, something I should say. Uh, essentially, you pull it out, and that starts the PTO, no matter which selection. Uh, you always wanna start this at a higher throttle. You don't ever wanna engage this at low throttle, or you could damage your clutch pack in there. Below that, we have the parking brake. This parking brake is set right now. So you just push forward on the pedal down here. I'm not sure if you can see it. I can't remember if I put it on screen or not, but I'll show those controls. But if you push that in and then down, it releases it. And then to engage it, you push in on the pedal and then lift up and then release and it keeps the parking brake engaged. So pretty easy operation there. Next to that then over here, you have cruise control. A lot of lower level tractors won't have this. I I'm not sure if anything in the 100 series has it. Same with the 200, and I'm not sure about the low, lower level 300s. I know the higher level 300 series, I would imagine, would have it. Uh, but I could be wrong. I would have to look into it. I'll put that information in the video just so you guys know. Not that you really care, though, if you're looking at a 700 series. But that's pretty easy to use. It's kind of similar to how the park brake works to where um, if you're going, if you're driving forward, you would have your forward pedal pushed in so much and then you just push down on that and it basically holds the, uh, the forward pedal down, you know, to keep you at the same speed. I have noticed when using this though that if you're going a certain speed and you push that cruise control button, once you let your foot off, it may slow down just a little bit. I'm not sure if they're all like that, but this one and the X580 that I had both did that a little bit. I think it's just the design, you know, there's a little bit of slack in there and it's enough that you can tell a difference. So if you're gonna set this and gonna use it a lot, which I really don't use it that much, at least with the size yard that I have right now, maybe if you have a really big long yard and you're doing a lot of big straight passes, it'll be worth it. But for me, I don't really use it a whole heck of a lot. So if you do, it might be beneficial to at least push your pedal in a little bit further than what you want to go and then set your cruise and back off and 
that'll probably be about where you want it to be. And then to disengage it, you can either push the pedal in, push that back or lift it up, or I guess you can push on that top part, or just like a car, you can just tap either the brake or the reverse button, but I wouldn't do that. I would put your foot on the forward pedal and then push the button again or lift the button out, however it works. You just don't want to jerk yourself to a stop. If you push reverse, that's not going to be good for it. Uh, and then pushing the brake, you could, you know, come to a, a halt pretty quick. There's also the hydraulic levers on this side, but I'm going to talk about them a little bit later separately. I'm going to go through the rest of the controls first. So now we will move on to, well, I'll just move you down here. I'll keep you all on this side first, and then we'll go to the other side. So let me move you down here and we'll talk about the pedals. Now lower here on the tractor, we have three different pedals. So super simple operation. Even some of Deere's uh, subcompact tractors are gonna have similar setups like this, depending on what transmission you get with them. Uh, and then this, you're gonna find a similar setup all the way down into the 100 series. Really simple to use. I feel like it's a fantastic setup. Super easy to learn, easy to control. I think this is probably one of the features that Deere has that uh, they do a pretty good job in compared to some other companies out there. Some other ones have uh, different types of pedals that are a little bit more awkward in my opinion to use, but this all works out really good. So essentially your park brake up here is this big one. Uh, and then you just have your forward and reverse pedal. There's a nice little arrow molded into the rubber. Nothing wild, it's super easy to understand. Uh, you can go very slow with this. You can go, you know, full speed and any rate in between. It's, it's really easy to control, uh, in my opinion. Great design. So that is those pedals. Also gonna just point you over in this direction. This is the uh, mower deck height control. You can use this, right now I have it uh, all the way up just because I have the plow on right now, so I don't want those draft arms going down. So I have it all the way up to kind of lock those draft arms all the way up. You can spin this around to whichever number you need, and that's going to change your deck height. Essentially, it's a stop as to how far down uh, that rock shaft will go. One thing I'll point out, you have the different numbers on there and then increments. These aren't necessarily going to be inches. I know a lot of people assume that those are inches, but they're not. When you, when you set this, you're going to want to level your deck or whatever to whatever height. If you want to go by inches, you can, um, but you're going to have to level it that way with whatever marking you are going to cut out mostly. So like me, I usually like cutting it two and a half. So I set it at two and a half, which is conveniently also where you're supposed to level the deck at and then adjust my blade height to two and a half. So if you're someone that likes to cut it three, three and a half, you're gonna have to set it close. Although I don't think they have marks here. So it's in thirds. So you're not really gonna be able to get a half. Uh, so you're gonna have to just get close if you wanted something like three and a half. But if you want three, set it at three adjust your mower deck at three. That's gonna get you uh, that exact inch that you want. So don't go setting it two and a half, setting that at two and a half inches, and then go to, you know, three and a half, four, and expect that to be that many. It could vary. So just keep that in mind. Easy operation on that though, just twists around. Uh, nothing wild there. So now we will move to the other side of the operator station. Finishing up floor mounted controls real quick. We'll go over this wonderful orange pedal. So this is the transaxle differential lock. This is one of the more defining features of the X500 and 700 series. This feature is fantastic, especially for when it comes to that ground engaging work. You can uh, completely lock the rear wheels together and all you gotta do is press on, press on that uh, lever, button, whatever you wanna call it. Basically, push on that, locks rear wheels together, and until pressure is evened out, as far as the rear, rear wheels turning uh, at the same speed, like in a straight line to where there's not pressure on, you know, that lock, um, this will stay engaged. So essentially, if you're in a turn, you can pull your foot off of that and it'll stay locked 
until you get going straight again, the pressure is relieved, then it'll pop back out and it'll be unlocked. So keep that in mind when it comes to operation of that locker. But it is a great feature to have. There again, really easy to use. You can use it at any speed. You don't have to be going fast, slow, no matter what. Um, that thing works and it's, like I said, really useful, especially if you're in snow, plowing, doing anything like that. Now on the left side, we have a, a few more controls here we'll go over. So, I mean, of course I'll mention it, the steering wheel. Um, that should be really obvious to anyone though. Of course, that's how you determine which direction you're driving, if you didn't know. Under that, there's a little button. I'm not sure if you can see it, but a little lever you pull and these all have tilt wheels. I know on the X300 and X500 series, only the really higher end ones do. So like on the X500s, only the 590. And then on the 300s, I'm sure probably only the 390, maybe the 380, but I doubt it. All the X700s have that though. So just pull that back and then you can adjust the wheel tilt however you like it. Next moving down is the throttle control. So all of these are gonna be just one lever. They're not gonna be like uh, some of the lower, I shouldn't say lower end, but the lower series of tractors to where the gas engines are gonna possibly be carbureted and have a choke lever as well. These ones are all gonna be electronically fuel injected if it's gas. And then of course it's EFI if it's a diesel. So you're not gonna have to worry about a choke on these machines. Under that is this little yellow button, which I can't say I like the design of it on the 700 series. I liked it a lot more on my X580 that I had. It was a bigger button. It was a lot easier to uh, actually push it if you weren't exactly looking at it or if you weren't familiar with like muscle memory of where it is. This, as some may say, is not actually the rear implement option. It is the reverse implement option. So this button, is for if you have the PTO engaged for the mower deck or something like that, and you wanna go backwards without the machine stopping, you need to push this in before you touch the reverse button. And on this machine in particular, it's actually really sensitive. So even if like just the weight of your foot like coming in contact with that rear button is enough that it'll shut the machine down if you don't have this pushed in. And when I say pushed in, I mean pushed in like all the way, like not just a little bit, it's gotta be, you know, definitely pushed on not like smashing it through the dash or anything, but you need to actually have it pushed down. You can't just like be on it just a little bit. So that button, some people love it, some people hate it. I hated it on my 100 series because it was just another thing to have to do because I had, it was a little D105. And along with that, you had to actually shift it into reverse. So it was just another thing to have to do and I hated it. I bypassed it in that machine. And then when I got my 580, I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna leave it. I'm not gonna disable this one. They're easy to disable. I can do it. I'm not gonna show how to do it because I don't wanna be liable if anything happens to anyone. But um, on these ones with that pedal setup that I showed you guys, it's super easy to use. It's easy enough to just push this down. Uh, I don't have a problem with it on these. So we're gonna move down here. We got some switches. Uh, there's two switches here and one of them is a three-way switch. The one on the top here says right here 12 volt outlet So over by where the cup holder and the little toolbox area and everything is there's a 12 volt outlet near the back of the fender You have control over that you can turn it on and off. It's not always on like some other machines may have So kind of neat there, you know, you can utilize that on and off switch depending on what exactly you're trying to do with it um if whatever you have back there doesn't have its own on off switch or you know what have you below that you have these little light indicators so you have your off position which is where it is now in the middle is your normal lights so you'll have headlights tail lights on and then if you flip this all the way over you can actually turn on the reverse lights all the time so that you have like rear work lights which is pretty convenient uh, it's pretty nice if you're doing anything at night, plowing, anything like that, and you don't want your light on only when backing up because it does have reverse lights when just backing up. But if you wanted them on all the time for extra visibility or whatever, uh, pretty great option to have. 
So I think that is it for little buttons and such. I'm gonna try to show you guys just a little bit of control that you have on the LCD display. All right, I'm gonna freehand this one. So I'll turn my ignition on. And over here, that little, there, that button there, that light that just went off, that was the, the glow plug button. Okay, now for your display here, you don't have too much control over really anything other than you can change the brightness. So to do that, you just push this little info button. And then from there, the plus button, you can change the brightness of the display. And then you can go back. That's pretty much it. It'd be cool if there was some other info, like if you could change that to show like RPM or, you know, anything like that it might be cool. But there again, I guess you have RPM on the sides, but I guess it'd be cool to sometimes see the actual number as opposed to just, oh, you're this high on the RPM or whatever. I feel like they could have added some more info there, but whatever. It's a pretty nice display nonetheless. And I'm going to freehand a little bit of seat talk. So, of course, you have an adjustment there to put the seat forward and back. And you have an adjustment here to, you know, change the angle of the uh, seat back. So that's pretty cool, cool feature of this seat. Uh, if you do have the armrest kit, you have an adjustment here. You can screw these in or out. Uh, if you screw them in clockwise, it will change the angle of the armrest. It'll make it go down a little bit. Uh, if you thread that further out, it'll angle the armrest up a little bit. So depending on however you uh, prefer your armrest to feel, or depending on how you have the seat back angled, you can change that to fit your liking. So now I'm gonna get into uh, one of the, I would say like highly defining features of the X700 series tractors. So you actually have an SCV with two outlets. So you have a little bit more than just hydraulic deck lift like you would find on the higher end 300 series and the higher end 500 series. All of the X700 series are gonna have a uh, two circuit uh, hydraulic SCV on them. So really neat, you can do a lot of stuff with it. Uh, aftermarket, you can even add, uh, you can plumb in essentially an extra, I shouldn't say an extra circuit, but a circuit extension uh, to go from the SCV up front here to the rear. That way you can run uh, a hydraulic circuit at the rear of the tractor utilizing what you have up here on the front on the side. So the hydraulic levers tie into this. They are also your mower deck lift and the three-point lift. And I'm gonna explain all of that. So you'll have four different, S or sorry, not SCVs. One SCV, you have four different outlets up here. Your two top ones, green and black, are gonna be controlled by this lower lever. The two bottom ones, yellow and silver, are gonna be controlled by the upper lever. So it sounds a little bit different because, you know, upper and lower here, upper, lower down there, and they're actually flip-flopped. So don't assume that the upper level, upper lever runs the upper circuit. It doesn't. I'll explain to you uh, how you can tell if you were ever unsure. So dependent on the implement, if you're doing the mower deck or the rear three-point lift, you're going to be using your upper lever. The upper lever is only going to go front and back, whereas the lower lever is going to be able to go front and back. But also, if you push it forward kind of fast, you heard that click, that's into the float position. So at this point, it essentially leaves that circuit open to where fluid can flow back and forth. And if you have an implement hooked up to it, it'll be able to rise and fall as it pleases. It's not gonna be locked to one position uh, like if you had this lever or the lower level and not float position. Um, they're gonna stay at whatever position it's set at. And then you just pull back and you're back out of the float position. You don't have float when you're using the mower deck or the three-point lift. The mower deck and the three-point lift have a float feature essentially built into their design. So you don't need to worry about that, which is why you just use the upper lever. It's 
It's also a little bit more convenient to get to. Now the thing is where it gets confusing and it confuses a lot of people is when you're using front implements because your lift gets essentially flip-flopped. So I mentioned about how the mower deck, the three-point, have float built into their design. When you have the quick hitch, like you might be able to see up here, there's not a float feature built into the design. There's a cylinder right here, and this cylinder you can control to actually keep that plow blade or whatever at one position, or you can use the float feature. Why you would want the float is because if you're using something like this and you hit you know, a solid piece of ice or something, or the ground's a little bit uneven, you don't necessarily want it to dig in. You want it to be able to kind of like follow that terrain or a snow blower or something like that. You want it to follow the terrain. So that's why you use the float feature for the lift. You can click that forward and then your lift will do it at once. And then in that case, your upper lever is what controls the side to side. So I think that's one thing that I see a lot of people have questions about. Uh, they're unsure what controls what and why it does what it does. They get a little bit confusing. So hopefully that cleared it up for you a little bit. Um, and I mean, I can, I can probably, I'm trying to think of a good way I can show it. I mean, I can show lifting each, but I don't know. I'm probably not going to get into that. Just take my word for it. The one, the bottom cylinder that has the float, that's your lift when using a front implement. The upper one, no float, that's what does your mower deck and your three-point. Uh, along with the hydraulic levers and the SCV, there's another control under there that I'm going to show you that you're going to need to know if you're using a front implement. And that is the hydraulic lockout valve. All right, so this little valve right here, that is the hydraulic lockout valve. A lot of people question this. They question whether or not they need one. Sometimes question what exactly it is. So I'm gonna explain kind of the importance of it. So this valve gets plumbed in when you put on the front quick hitch attachment. And essentially what it does, so this is the lower circuit, the yellow and silver, yellow and gray, whatever. So what it's doing is it's locking out flow from this circuit um, which is the upper lever, so your rear control. And the reason you need this is because if you don't, you're going to be sharing hydraulic flow between this circuit and then the mower deck lift and the three-point, that actual cylinder that's in the tractor. What happens because of this is you lose, like, the speed at which that circuit can actuate the side-to-side -side turning of the plow blade. So remember, this is what's controlled by the upper lever. So it's the lower circuit. So this is not the float one. So when you're using that, uh, you know, front plow blade or whatever, um, this is gonna be controlling your side to side, your angling. Essentially, this is closed right now. So it's blocking flow. If you open this, so turn it counterclockwise a whole bunch. It will open and then it's gonna allow fluid to go back through uh, to that cylinder in the back and it'll then lift the mower deck, lift the three point. There is a company out there, Auxiliary Hydraulics. Uh, they sell a quarter turn valve and it's a little bit cheaper so I'm not sure if it's the angling kit that includes this or not, or if it's all quick hitches. I'm betting it's probably just the angling kit because if you have a snow blower, you wouldn't have angling. So they may not include that part. So it may just be part of the hydraulic angling kit, but I can't 100% remember. So if you upgrade later on and for some reason don't have this lockout valve, you can always buy one from them. It's going to be cheaper than the deer one, and it's going to be a little bit easier to use. But that is, hopefully, answers any questions about that valve. Um, I see a lot of questions that people have about, 
you know, why, why their either blade moves slow or they're transitioning from winter time, you know, use, like so they say they got their machine in the winter time. It was already set up for winter work. And now they're going to springtime, putting the mower deck back on or putting something on the rear of the tractor and it's not wanting to work. This is probably the reason you probably have this valve closed. So, you know, look into it. If it's closed, open it up. Everything should work for you. Uh, if your angling is really slow, everything else is lifting, then that's a, a sure sign that your valve is open and you need to close it. So hopefully that clears all of that up. So next we're gonna look at the uh, optional three points. And so not all tractors, of course, are gonna have this. This is only gonna be if you have this option. So there's a few adjustments and then, uh, well, I guess really all of it's an adjustment, but essentially another control that I'll talk about. So top link, you have the top link here. This is adjustable. You can turn it either way and it's either gonna lengthen or shorten that top link, which will adjust the angle of your implement. So different implements are gonna work at different angles. And then depending on the angle, you can actually use some implements in varying ways. Uh, if you have this link shorter and you're say using a box blade with it shorter, you're going to be taking a more aggressive cut with the blade. If you lengthen it and you're only using, say you have like a dual bladed box blade with this lengthened, you'll only be contacting the ground with the rear blade and you can use it as more of a smoothing action. So depending on what you're using, that can change how the implement uh, works, whether it be more or less aggressive. Also, on one of your side links, you have this adjustment here. This is gonna allow you to tilt the implement. So something like a uh, turning plow, um, you can use this to adjust the angle that it's cut at. So I know with a plow like that, one wheel you're gonna have in the furrow and the whole tractor is gonna be sitting you know, at an angle. So you're gonna wanna have this at a slightly different angle in order to account for that. However, generally plows are gonna have uh, the pins at the side at different angles. So you're not gonna have to worry quite so much about adjusting that. Sometimes I would imagine if an implement has more weight on one side or the other though, it can set on there a little bit weird. So you can use this to compensate for that and straighten everything out. It's just one of those adjustments that's built into there. Um, normally I think once you have this set, to be level, you're not probably gonna have to worry about it too much, but I figured I'd point out that you do have an adjustment there. Right here is the, I guess, third adjustment that you're gonna have uh, with the three-point hitch, and this is your depth control. So you have a really fine adjustment here with how deep you want your three-point hitch to go. I think there's one video, I kind of showed it before, but this is kind of a hack you can use. So this is a DeWalt uh, gyroscopic screwdriver. This is the one that uh, you can change. It can be either straight like that, or you can have it more of like a, you know, screw gun type shape. But essentially it's pretty neat. There's not a forward or reverse. You literally turn it one way or the other. And, uh, you know, you can use this to adjust this. So what you gotta do is I have here, it's a 15 millimeter socket, just one that I don't use much. It's a 12 point socket. So generally don't use those a whole lot or use them at all really if I can avoid it. But I took one of them, ground out two little half circles on the sides. And essentially what they do is they fit onto the end of this and engage this uh, spring roll pin. So once you have your weight off of this hitch, you can actually use this and uh, turn this really fast. So if you have it locked up like I do right here, you can, let's see, I think, yeah, loosen it and it's gonna push. There's a big square steel nut in here. It'll drive it all the way to the back. And you can do it a lot quicker than having to manually be down here doing this. So if you guys don't have something like this, I would highly recommend it. I literally bought this tool specifically with this in mind. Um, I don't really have much intention to use it for anything else. Uh, I mean, I can use it for other things and I have, but realistically, I, I bought it specifically for this purpose. 
Uh, it works fantastic. And, you know, of, of all the tools and things I've used on this tractor to do different things, uh, this is probably the most useful and beneficial one out there for sure. So definitely look into something like this if you haven't to adjust this. And uh, I'm going to do a little bit of demos later, I think. <clears throat> coming up here shortly actually and uh keep a lookout i'll show you guys this and you know having it used in action one thing i forgot to mention on the three point is the sway chains here it doesn't seem like a control it's more of specifically an adjustment but essentially to keep the three point arms from swinging back and forth because it can swing on here a little bit especially when it's in the ground uh you want to tighten these up and that'll keep everything from swaying back and forth a bunch. I haven't really had to use it too much for everything I've done so far, but it is an option that's there uh, that you can use to help keep everything tight and tracking straight if you're using a, uh, a turning plow or anything like that. So moving on, I bring you to this final control, at least that I can think of. Hopefully I didn't miss anything. But you have here, this is another going to be an option. Not all tractors are going to have this. It's only if you maybe bought something used that has it or got a new one that was already set up with it or added it. So the rear PTO. I have the rear PTO on this tractor. And when you have that, you're going to have this lever. This lever is a selection as to which PTO you want to use. So there's a sticker that should be on there. And it has little dots highlighted of which PTO you're using. So this rear PTO is a 540 RPM PTO. That's on the rear. Your mid PTO, which you would use for the mower deck, is a 2000 RPM PTO. If you have a front PTO, that's the same as the mid PTO. It connects by the mid PTO. It's not like you're never going to have three PTOs on this machine that you can use. You're only ever going to have two. So you have your 540 selection all the way up on here. In the middle, you have, let's see, that's both. So you'd be running the 540 and the 2000 RPM PTO. So middle and rear. I can't really think of too many situations in which you would use that. Not sure why you would. There's not a whole lot of implements out there or combinations that you would do that. The only thing I could think of is apparently there's certain material collection systems that'll use this PTO. So you could be cutting and using a material collection system at the same time. I would also think maybe if you had some sort of like spreader on the back and you were spreading something over your grass right after cutting it. Uh, I don't know. I'm having a hard time. I'm still fairly new, you know, to all this. So I'm not sure hundred percent of what all's out there, why you would want to use that. But it is an option there that you have if you ever needed to run the mid and the rear. There again, it, the mid runs the front PTO, so maybe you have a front mounted attachment that uh, you want to use along with something on the rear. If you guys have anything like that, please let me know. I'm really curious. If I see the question, I'd like to be able to answer it for people. So if I can learn some different things that could go on there, that would be great to have. And then all the way down, you're gonna have just the mid PTO. So your mower deck uh, and then anything on the front. Keep in mind the rear PTO, that one you can actually use uh, without being in the seat. So you can run that one as long as you have the parking brake on, you don't have to be in the seat. Any other PTO, you have to be in the seat in order to use those. So keep that in mind. So if you have something like a generator hooked up to the back, uh, I know people also talk about um, like grain augers, stuff like that. Uh, you could run with the rear of this machine. So that's that. So now I think that's all I got for uh, the controls on the machine. I can't think of anything else. As I mentioned, the stuff at the rear here, this is more of an option, uh, but I figured I'd go over it. You know, if you guys are getting a used machine that has this type of equipment. So yeah. Now I think I'm gonna go through, I'm just gonna kind of show you guys a little bit of how each system works. I don't have the mower deck on here, so I'm not gonna be able to show you the mower deck lift. So it'll more so just be the three point lift that you'll be seeing. It, like I said, it runs on the same circuit. So we'll go through it just to kind of show you guys. And I forgot one little control. 
So you can see there, there's an arrow that says push, sorry, to push manually. So this little guy right here, you push that up and that disengage, disengages part of the transaxle so you can push the machine around. The thing's still really heavy though, so it's not super easy to push. Uh, but that is the final control that I can think of. This is on the right hand back side of the tractor, right inside of the wheel. And that should do it for the controls on the X700 series tractors. Pretty sure I hit everything. If I missed anything or you have any questions about anything, of course, please ask. Let me know, give me a comment, whatever. Uh, I'd be more than glad to answer anything that I can. So uh, yeah, thank you for uh, whoever suggested this. You know who you are. Hopefully this was uh, done to your liking. And uh, yeah, again, if anyone has any questions, comments, anything, please let me know. Um, I'm, I always want to try to make my videos better, so I'm open to suggestions. Uh, and of course, if anybody has a suggestion for a video that I can do, please let me know. I'd be glad to do it. You know, helping people out, answering these questions, that's my favorite thing to do. So thanks for watching. Have a good one.